The following is part four of a four-part series on developing weather-ready schools, produced by the National Weather Service, Chicago. In this video, we will cover hazardous weather preparedness for transportation and during extracurricular activities. Hamilton, Illinois, April 8, 1999, 5 p.m. The skies were partly sunny with temperatures in the 70s. Several sporting events were scheduled that evening in the Hamilton School District including a baseball game and track meet. At 6.52 p.m., an F3 tornado struck Hamilton and hit the baseball field and track. No spectators or students were hurt. No one was even there. Why? Because a school official was aware there was a risk for severe weather. He then made the tough decision to cancel the events in spite of the current calm conditions. He undoubtedly saved lives. We use the same four pieces of our hazardous weather preparedness model when discussing transportation and extracurricular activities. Again, planning begins with filling the position of weather watcher at all after-school activities. Carrying a portable weather radio with him or her is recommended. Bus drivers and coaches should also have portable weather radios with them. At the very least, the bus dispatch should have a NOAA weather radio. These smoke detectors of severe weather will alert as soon as severe weather is imminent for a specified program location. Communication is an even greater necessity when outside the classroom. Bus dispatch should notify bus drivers if severe weather is in the forecast. The athletic director should do the same for all coaches or activity supervisors. Right before the event, spectators should also be aware of the potential and be told where to go should the need arise to take shelter. Be sure to have a backup communication plan, such as a megaphone, if the power goes out suddenly. Knowing where to take shelter is also extremely important. If you are caught outside or driving during a tornado, you should always seek shelter in the nearest substantial building. Outbuildings and temporary buildings offer no protection from tornadoes. Always seek shelter on the lowest level in small, interior, windowless rooms or hallways. As a last resort, and if you cannot make it to a substantial building, take shelter in the nearest ditch or low-lying area. Never seek shelter from a tornado under a bridge or overpass. Gyms, auditoriums, and other rooms with large span ceilings are easily destroyed by high winds. If you are caught outside during a thunderstorm, seek shelter in the nearest building. If you are in a bus, stay in the bus. Never release students if there is lightning or hail. It is advised to not drive during a severe thunderstorm as the winds may be greater than 58 miles per hour and has the potential to overturn the bus. Always be alert for downed trees and power lines after a storm passes. If you ever encounter water covering the roadways, turn around, don't drown. It can be difficult to know the depth of the water or if the road is still intact underneath. When outdoors, it is very valuable to be able to distinguish simple clouds associated with severe weather. A wall cloud is a definite lowering of the cloud base, typically beneath the rain-free portion of a storm. Sometimes, the wall cloud will be rotating about a vertical axis. A persistent, rotating wall cloud is the area of the thunderstorm which is most likely to produce tornadoes. A shelf cloud is often described as a scary looking cloud at the leading edge of a thunderstorm. It is a low, horizontal, wedge-shaped cloud likely associated with a thunderstorm gust front. It may rotate on a horizontal axis. Expect very strong winds as it passes your location. These winds may become a hazard to a school bus. Scud clouds are often mistaken for wall clouds, but are very different. Scud clouds are small, uneven, low cloud fragments that are not attached to a larger cloud base. They usually rise up into thunderstorms and do not rotate. Scud clouds are not associated with tornadoes. A funnel cloud is a rotating column that does not touch the ground. No debris can be seen below a funnel cloud, but it may later develop into a tornado. Anyone interested in learning more about severe thunderstorms can become a trained storm spotter by attending a National Weather Service storm spotter class. Classes are held annually throughout the spring. For more information on weather safety, visit our website and download our complete hazardous weather preparedness manual for schools. Thank you for watching and this concludes part 4 of our Weather Ready Schools series.